Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Second MRI, and this is a patient who has normal sized ventricles. And I'm showing this to contrast the next patient who has abnormal ventricles, but this is what they should look like. This is a view in profile. You can see the nose, it's called a sagittal view. You see the pituitary gland here. And this sagittal view, we see the lateral ventricles up here. They're normal little slit like areas filled with white fluid. Third ventricle is down below in here. The fourth ventricle is a little triangle here filled with white fluid, and the fluid flows out from the lateral ventricles into the third ventricle, down through a narrow channel into the fourth ventricle, and then out, and then down around the spine, uh, the spinal cord, and then it comes back up and around and is resorbed up here. So the fluid just flows through the brain and down to the spinal canal and back up around where it's resorbed. And this patient has, again, normal size ventricles. This is called an axial view, and we see the right lateral ventricle here, left lateral ventricle here. Again, the normal in size, you see this foggy area here. This is called the choroid plexus. That's what creates the fluid um, that flows around. So this will generate the fluid that flows through the ventricular system. And we'll put up another view, same um, uh, patient, but they have white fluid now. On the other one, the fluid was dark. On this one, we had fluid white, called a T2-weighted sequence. And so now we're going to go to today's patient. He came in with vertigo. He is a 61-year-old lawyer. He was a swinging a golf club and twisted his head and uh, noticed he felt dizzy. And uh, he went to his ENT doctor, and they thought maybe he had a problem with his inner ears and did some tests, and they were inconclusive. And they ordered an MRI to look at his inner ear structures that looked normal. But we see here that his ventricles are not quite normal. You can see by that last patient, they're supposed to be small and slit-like. We can see his right lateral ventricle, left lateral ventricle. They're massive, really enlarged ventricles. So we call this hydrocephalus, enlarged ventricles. And we look to see, is it communicating? Meaning, do, are all the ventricles enlarged? In that case, sometimes the arachnoid granulations that are up here around the periphery of the brain that resorb the fluid, sometimes they can get clogged off or don't function. The fluid will be generated, but not resorbed very well, and they can expand. Among other things, sometimes the choroid plexus makes too much fluid, um, but those things can cause all the ventricles to be enlarged. Sometimes you have obstructive hydrocephalus, where you have a tumor someplace, and it blocks the normal flow out of the lateral ventricle into the third ventricle, through this little narrow channel here, and then into this fourth ventricle and out. So we look through this whole area to see, are they all enlarged? Or is there a tumor blocking one? And so now we're going to do that now. So we're going to look here on the sagittal view. And we see that the lateral ventricles, where the fluid is generated, are massively enlarged. The fluid flows out through the, through the foramen of Monroe. You can actually see it opening right here. The fluid will come out through these usually narrow channels into this area down here, the third ventricle. The third ventricle is way, way too large. And so it is also enlarged lateral and third ventricles are enlarged. Now we're going to go look for the fourth ventricle, which is down here. And that's normal in size. So we have enlargement of the lateral and third, but by the time it gets to the fourth, it's normal. So there's a narrow channel right here. This is called the cerebral aqueduct or the aqueduct of Sylvius. And the fluid has to go through this narrow channel. And we can see the midbrain here. We see this thing called the tectum here. And it has to go between these two structures. Sometimes patients can have a pineal mass or a pineal cyst or a pineal region cyst um, that can push down on this tectum and cause this to be narrowed. But in this patient, we don't see that. And the tectum looks pretty good. But we do note that there is significant difference between the third and fourth ventricle. So we would call this um, a non-communicating hydrocephalus and this is related to obstruction at this level through this aqueduct of Sylvius. Sometimes you can have scarring from prior insult or blood products. You can clog this. Um, other times you can have little congenital webs that have been there for the patient's whole life that can cause narrowing here and a slow buildup of the ventricles. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Luckily, this can be treated by putting a catheter in and draining it out, or sometimes they can go in there and perforate portions to let the fluid drain out. So this is something uh, that's fairly easily treatable, thankfully. Now this is a flare view, really thin section images. We can see the lateral ventricle 
foramen of Monroe, the big communication, usually this is very small, into the third ventricle. And this is that aqueduct of Sylvius. But on this view, we see that, wait a minute, maybe there's a little small band there. Put an arrow there. This may be a small, again, congenital web going across. It's hard to tell, to be honest. But we raise the possibility this could be related to that. Definitely difference in the third and fourth ventricles. So this looks like the level of obstruction. And we don't see any obvious tumor pushing this down or compressing it. So that may be what it is. So they're going to see a neurosurgeon and uh, try to get treatment. And uh, hopefully they'll uh, improve significantly with that um, uh, drainage catheter or whatever they do to fix. And that's it. So this is a case of hydrocephalus causing the patient's vertigo. And luckily this is treatable. This is just one more view looking straight on, a coronal view. You can see that right lateral ventricle, left lateral ventricle. You can see the third, we can see the third ventricle right here below that. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much.